Hopefully, you can see my desktop. Is it visible? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. This is my email and phone number. This is my email and uh, phone number also there. Last line you can check. And those who are facing some problem, they, you can always write to me. Or you can give me a call. Of course, a little bit busy, but I'll give you time maybe whenever I'll be free. Don't worry at all. We can discuss problem. Hopefully, you have noted. Yes? Uh, spare one minute. OK, OK. Just take your time. Yes, sir. OK. okay. All right. So we were looking for now one way and two way NOVA. And now we are looking for very, very important part that is called binary logistic regression. Binary logistic regression. I think you have gone through the simple regression when there are, there are two, only two variables, y and x. You have also gone through the multiple regression whenever there are more than two independent variables have this topic has been covered yes simple regression multiple regression any participants please this topic has been covered simple regression and yes, multiple sir, regression and, uh, regression regression yeah yeah so that that topic now in continuation of that topic there is another type of regression and that is called binary logistic regression and I'll also cover some additional topics of odds ratio, risk ratio, sensitivity, specificity, and ROC curve. They are very, very useful. And binary logistic regression, sometimes in medical sciences, they have people also call this disease prediction model. Right? Disease prediction model. OK. Now, I just try to connect this with a simple or multiple linear regression. In multiple regression model, there is one dependent variable. and Let's say y, and it depends upon number of factors, x1, x2, right up to xk. They are known as independent variables. But the condition in multiple regression is that y as well as x1, x2, xk, they all have to be measurable quantities. In the, right in the first lecture, if you remember, I discussed about the categorical data and measurement data. So all of them including y x1 x2 xk they all have to be measurable quantities they should be measured on a proper scale ratio or interval but if any one of the variable is on a nominal scale or sometimes ordinal scale then all those techniques fails virtually you cannot apply multiple linear regression that's why we come to now logistic regression in logistic regression the dependent variable, let me just repeat, the dependent variable, which is y, is always binary. That's why this is sometimes called binary logistic regression. Binary means either it is taking value 1 or it is taking value 0. For example, it could be the person is having disease 1, not having disease 0. Like, like cardiovascular disease, person is having cardiovascular disease 1, not having 0. Right, then this cardiovascular disease depends upon number of factors. It may depend upon, let's say, ECG status, where ECG could be normal or it could be abnormal. If it is normal, say zero. If it is abnormal, say one. Now again, it is having two categories. Similarly, it may also depend upon gender, sex, male or female, male one, female two. It may also depend upon age, where age is continuous, 45 years, 35 years, 65 years, 75 years. It is continuous variable. It may also depend upon BMI, body mass index, which is also a continuous variable. So that means the independent variables, either it is, a, it, they could be categorical variable, they could be continuous variable, or it could be a combination of categorical and continuous variables. So both the flexibilities are there. And that's why this binary logistic regression becomes important. 
because it can capture the situation when both the categorical and continuous variables are present in our data sets. OK, so other techniques will fail. Multiple logistic regression, simple regression, etc. You cannot apply those. OK, so here is actually logistic regression comes from logistic function. This is in mathematics, there is a function which is called logistic function. And the equation of that function is this. Right. Now, what this equation states, actually, I'll not take much of the time. For example, this line, which starts from zero, it simply says that there is no risk. But when certain risk factors are added, then risk goes on increasing. And a time comes when more and more risk will be there. The person is likely to die, actually. Now, this is being captured. This equation is being captured through this probability, basically. For example, at the initial phase of life, when the child is newborn, there are certain risks. But when a child grows to six or seven years, the risk start declining till the age of 45, 40 years. But after that, it will st again start increasing. Right. So when there is the person doesn't have any problem at all, what is the what is the person that what is the probability that a person will die when there is no risk? It will be almost zero. Hopefully you will agree with me. I mean, his health is OK, doesn't have any diabetes problem, no heart attack, nothing. All these things are intact. He is young also. So what do you think? What is the chances that a person is likely to die will be almost zero? Yes? Yes or no? Hello? Yes, sir. Now, let's say all of a sudden one risk factor has come and I, I take this as X1. That means the person has developed diabetes. So certain risk will increase. Let's say second risk factor, the person has developed coronary heart disease also. Second factor has come into the picture. And after a while, the third factor has also, third risk factor has also come into the picture. That is, he has a kidney problem. And after that, he is having a liver problem also. The more and more problems, what are the chances of survival? Chances of survival will be less and less. Yes or no? Yes. Right. So if there are more and more risk factors, this curve will go up. And a time will come that the person is likely to die will be almost 100%. That means it is coming at 1. When there is no risk, it, it starts from 0. So this curve is basically called logistic function. And if you put y is equal to 0 here, what will, y is nothing but a linear combination of risk factors. x1 is one risk factor, x2 is another risk factor, x3 is the third risk factor, and there are k number of factors. Y is a combination of risk factors. More and more risk factors, probability that a person will die will increase. Right. When Y will be 0, so this value will be 1 over 1 plus anything raised to power 0 will be 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1, half. So you will get at value Y is equal to 0, this value is half. When Y becomes minus infinity, when y becomes minus infinity, then you will see this will e raised to power minus and minus infinity. So it will become e raised to power infinity. Anything raised to power infinity is infinity. Infinity plus 1 is also infinity. So 1 over infinity will be 0. So px will be 0. So it will start from 0. You can see. That means when there is no risk factors, it will start from zero. When more and more risk factors, let's say when y becomes infinity, y becomes infinity, more and more risk factors, then this will be e raised to power minus infinity. e raised to power minus infinity, you can write 1 over e raised to power infinity. 1 over e raised to power infinity is 1 over infinity, that is 0. And you will get 1 over 1 plus 0, that is 1. So it will end up at 1. So it will start from this 0, go up to half, and then move up to 1. That's why this function. Now, this function attracted the attention of many epidemiologists. And uh, they translated into medical terminology that when no risk is there, then the probability that a person will die will be zero. 
and as long as one two three more and more risk factors will be added what is the probability that a person likely to die will approach to one it will goes close to one and this is called logistic regression right now where you can apply logistic regression is applicable to the situation where dependent variable is dichotomous dichotomous means either it is one or zero useful to the situation where we want to predict the presence or absence of characteristics or outcome on the basis of predictors predictors means x1 x2 xk which could be either numerical numerical means they which could be either continuous or categorical they could be categorical also a useful way of describing the relationship between one or more risk factors for example age cholesterol level hypertension and the outcome such as death which takes only two possible values dead or alive right so your dependent variable is always going to be dichotomous so here is the same regression equation where i have written pz is equal to 1 over 1 plus ez where z is a linear combination of risk factors this beta naught is called intercept which you have already done beta 1 is called regression coefficients associated with x1 similarly beta k is the regression coefficient associated with xk and in general bi's are not known as regression coefficients now i'll take up one example and that everything will be clear suppose there are three risk factors one of them is age which is a continuous variable another is gender which is categorical male and female the third one is cholesterol level cholesterol level is either low or it is high low or high again it is categorical and we wish to predict the risk of developing coronary heart disease because coronary heart disease is generally related with cholesterol level right and also depends upon age and males are more prone to cardiovascular disease as female so it may also depend upon sex or gender so now you take your z which is a dependent variable as coronary heart disease person is having coronary heart disease one not having zero i'm just coding one and zero one means yes zero means no then it depends upon x1 that is called cholesterol level we call this as cat zero if it is low one if it is high then it depends upon x2 age in years now age in year is a years is a continuous variable it's a continuous variable so now the next is ecg x3 is ecg ecg normally zero abnormal is one and the risk of developing the coronary heart disease is captured through this equation with this equation always lies between value will lie between zero and one and probability also lies between between zero and one now this z is basically depends upon three factors which one x1 x2 and x3 that means cholesterol level age and ecg status okay so z z depends upon so equation for z will be linear combination beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 so what kind of data we will be having some data let's say patients are coming to the hospital and there is a cardiologist who note down certain things like he he person says i am having coronary and seems that i am having heart problems but symptoms doesn't say and the test also doesn't say so he will be put as zero and uh, then cholesterol level is taken age is taken ecg is taken so all this information about that particular patient is available in one row then second patient he is having certain complications he says i may have a heart problem and the test was done he was actually having it was actually having and then if it is actually having so that means it is put as one and then again age cholesterol ecg is taken so data will be your dependent variable will be either one or zero one zero one zero or some may be one 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 or zero 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 then your independent variables will be x1 all cholesterol levels either low or high then all age and ecg hopefully the data is clear hello yes sir right so data will be of this type now based on this data let's say i have a data of 100 people 
based on these observations as in multiple regression we try to we estimate the parameters of the model here we can also estimate the parameters of the model there we use basically the least square regression technique but here we use maximum likelihood method why we use maximum likelihood method because there are some categorical variable and there are some continuous variable so you cannot apply least square method they will all fail so the parameters are estimated based on method of maximum like you will not have to do that spss will do it for you and you will get these estimates now you will get the estimate of beta naught beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 cap means the estimates are available now you will get one equation where this is known to you beta 1 is known to you beta 2 is known to you and now you can estimate z what is z z means coronary heart disease right now let's say pers one person has come to you you have an equation with you his age is suppose 60 years he is having high cholesterol level so here you will put this is known this is known i'll put 65 60 years here he is having high cholesterol, I will put 1 here. And ECG is normal, I will put 0 here. Because for 0, it is normal. And from there, you can estimate this Z. Once you estimate Z, it can be substituted here. And this value always give you the result between 0 and 1. So let's say your result is coming out to be 0.73. Suppose your result is 0.73. So what is the prediction? Prediction is that the person whose age is 60 years having high cholesterol but normal ecg are having 73 percent chances of developing a coronary heart disease did you understand the problem yes or no hello sir or ek bar explain ek bar or, or dekh lije this z pz which is called probability will always be computed like this so what I'm taking your Z is either person is having coronary heart disease or not having. If the person is having, then one. If the person is not having, then zero. So Z will be either one or zero. Okay. X1 is your cholesterol. Cholesterol is low cholesterol, zero. High cholesterol, one. Similarly, similarly you have X2, X3 in our data. So your X2 is age, X3 is ECG, either it is normal or abnormal, right? So your data will be having four columns. One column will be corresponding to Z, which is a dependent variable. Another column will be X1, which is all cholesterol. X2, third column, age. Fourth column will be ECG. Okay, so you will be having this data. Now, based on this data, you can estimate these unknown regression coefficients by using maximum likelihood technique and you can get this equation so this is available this is available this is available now i want to predict somebody's chances of coronary heart disease the person has gone to a doctor doctor is having this equation and doctor ask him what is your age he says sir 60 years so he'll put 60 years here then he also note down the cholesterol level it is high so x2 will be one because high for it is one he says you also go for ecg ecg was normal so it is zero so you will estimate z now substitute this z here you will get pz pz is a probability between zero and one suppose this value is coming out to be 0 0.73 that means the person whose age is 63 years 60 years having high cholesterol level but normal ecg will be having 73 percent chances of developing a coronary heart disease so you can give a prediction without doing much of the work is that okay yes sir right now this is the equation after analyzing 609 patients i got this equation here x1 is your cholesterol x2 is age and x3 is your ecg let's say person is of age 60 x2 is high cholesterol x3 is normal ecg so this will be zero this will be one this will be 60 then you will get the value of z substitute that value of z here you will estimate this from here that it will lie between zero and one obviously this always lie between zero and one 
suppose this time it is coming out to be 0.93 that means jiska umar 60 saal ka hai uska ecg normal hai high cholesterol hai us aadmi ke 93% chances hain kya hone ka coronary heart disease hone ka you follow my point hello yes sir okay good let's look at so from this predicted equation you will be able to predict let's say patient number 1 and patient number two you can compare them also let's say here cholesterol is high age is 40 years ecg is normal so if you compute the predicted risk i call this as p1z p1z means it is relating to patient number one so 73 percent patient number two cholesterol is low age is again 40 ecg is again normal predicted risk is 75.5 percent you multiply the probability with percentage you will get percent sorry multiply with 100 you will get percentage so we generally compute what are the chances because other parameter age is same ecg is same only thing is change in the cholesterol cholesterol here is normal here is high so that means if you take a risk ratio 73 divided by 35.5 approximately 2 what does this mean that is the person whose cholesterol is high if you compare this with a normal person, then his chances are double that he will likely to get the coronary heart disease. You follow this? Yes, please. Yes. Sir. Okay. So that is the idea of logistic regression. So in logistic regression, sir, risk ratio. Please say. Pardon? Risk ratio. Risk oh, ratio means risk ratio means this is called RR. How you can compare patient? Two versus patient one. That is risk ratio. That means with the help of risk ratio, you can say chances are 1.5 times or maybe same chances. For example, if this would have also been around 35%, this will also around 35%. That means cluster, the cluster doesn't have any effect. The chances are same if it is one. But if it is two times, that means the risk of developing for patient one, the coronary heart disease, is almost double as compared to patient number two that is called risk ratio is this clear yes sir. okay now in logistic regression we deal with odds ratio we also deals with the risk ratio the risk ratio i have already shown you now people also get confused between odds ratio now first of all i'll demonstrate what do you mean by odds and then i'll come to odds ratio now suppose that the probability of success is 0.8 total probability is always one if probability of success is 0.8 what is the probability of failure then can you tell me if probability of success is 0.8 what is the probability of failure one, one, two. one, one minus probability yeah, of one, success. one minus probability of success that means 0.2 so probability of success is 0.8 probability of failure is 0.2 then how we compute odds of success? Odds of success will be P divided by Q. So your P is 0.8, Q is 0.2, you divide, it is 4. That means the odds of success are 4 to 1. 4 to 1. That means if there is one failure, 4 will be success. Right? Now, what will be odds of failure? Odds of failure will be just opposite. Q divided by P. 0.2 divided by 0.8. That is 0.25. So the odds of success and the odds of failure are just reciprocal of one another. Can you see that? Yes, please. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Because yes. if I if I if you divide one by four, you will get 0.25. If you divide one by 0.25, you will get four. So they are reciprocal. Odds of success and odds of failure are reciprocal of one another. But then what is odds ratio? What is odds? These are odds. You can compute odds of success. You can compute odds of failure. What is odds ratio? Here is the example. Please try to understand. Suppose that 7 out of 10 females are admitted to a medical school while 3 out of 10 males are admitted. Then odds for female, odds of success I am talking about. Odds for female is what? Odds for female is 0.7 divided by 0.3 yes or no 
Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Because probability of success is point seven, failure is point three. So odds for female is this. But what about odds for male? Yes, please. Odds for male will be point three divided by point seven because success here is three out of ten, and failure is point seven. So point three divided. So it is coming out to be point four two eight five seven. Now odds for female are known. Odds for male are known. If I take the ratio of these two odds, that will give you the odds ratio. So odds ratio is denoted by OR. So 2.333 divided by 0.42, it is coming out to be 5.44. So what is the interpretation of odds ratio? If odds ratio would have been one, if odds ratio would have been equal to one, that means there are similar chances of success for admission to the medical school for male and female. That is the interpretation. But here odds ratio is coming out to be 5.44 that means the odds that the females will be admitted will be 5.44 times higher than that for me yes please do you do you do you understand this part or not yes please sir, well, uh, us, no, the odds ratio uh, for admission wo jo last portion hai uska interpretation are ek bol dijiye iska interpretation ye hai because here female odds are are at the numerator male odds are at the denominator that means if you are getting a number higher than one higher than one so here you are getting 5.44 let's say this would have been 1.5 if this would have been 1.5 so you will say that the chances that the females will be admitted will be 1.5 times more than the males admitted to the medical school but if this odds ratio is exactly coming out to be 1 it is equal to 1.00 that means the odds that the male and female will be admitted to the medical school are same this is what the interpretation is and if this is less than 1 that means females are having less chances as compared to male if this is less than 1 so this is how you interpret one is one is the level line if it is less than 1 so there are less chances if it is more than one, there are more chances. You follow this point? So, sir, basically 5.44, the value 5.44 is against the one. Yeah, against the one. Against the oh. one means, yes, one is a level. So, it is 5.44 times greater or higher that the females will be admitted as compared to male. Absolutely. Okay. Sir, Thank here you. odds means the probability. So, Odd doesn't mean the probability. Odds mean odds of success divided by odds of failure for one parameter, like female. Similarly, odds for male you can compute. Odds for male will be probability of success for male is 3 out of 10. So what is the success? Success is 0 0.3. What is the failure? 0 0.7. So I'm computing the, this is odds for female, odds for male. Take the ratio of the two, you will get odds ratio. नहीं समझ में आया बताइए कंफ्यूजन कहां पे आई कैन रिपीट अगेन सर ये ऑड्स का मतलब मतलब ऑड्स का मतलब चांसेस okay. नहीं चांसेस नहीं ऑड्स चांसेस होते हैं सक्सेस और फेलियर के प्रोबेबिलिटी सक्सेस एंड फेलियर इज अ प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑड्स इज नॉट अ प्रोबेबिलिटी जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल ऑड्स ऑफ सक्सेस यहां पे कितने हो गए इसकी सक्सेस डिवाइड बाय फेलियर रेट ऑफ 4 आ गया or is not a probability so no, no. yeah so you try to understand we are here compa comparing male and female here this is simply the definition of odds for success to compute odds for failure to compute so here odds for female we are computing odds for female will be what is the success of female divided by the failure of female that will give you odds for female, female. similarly for odds for male will be success of male divide by the probability of the failure for me and then you take the ratio of the two will give you odds ratio okay okay so i am happy that you have asked this question sometimes people odds odds people take it it has to be between 0 and 1 no no odds could be any number odds could be any number it's a success or probability is always between 0 and 1 okay yes sir okay
Now, generally, odds ratio is compute for case control studies. For case control study or retrospective study, we call it, for example, these are the risk factors. Person is exposed to a particular and person is not exposed to any kind of, uh, you can say, antigen or any kind of, for example, person are exposed to, say, COVID virus or person are not exposed to COVID virus. For example, abhi bhi COVID do mene pehle, it was very prevalent in China, but it was not prevalent in India, right? And then you look for the cases. How many cases those who are exposed are there? And in the population where they are not, people are not exposed and still there could be one or two chances, right? In controls, in these are the cases, these are controls. So if you have exposed in cases, exposed in control and not exposed in cases and not exposed in control control are those where no treatment is given cases are there where the treatment is given right then what are the odds of exposure odds of exposure will be a divided by c odds in control will be b divided by c and then you just like male and female you take the ratio of these two that will give you odds ratio so odds ratio will look like this so odds ratio will be A divided by C divided by B divided by C. So virtually it is AD divided by BC. I mean, if this is a two by two table, how to compute odds ratio? You multiply A and D and divide by B and C. There is no need to compute anything. Odds ratio will be A into D divided by B into C. That's all. You will get odds ratio. Is that okay? Hello. Yes. And if odds ratio is equal to one, that means a odds are same whether person is exposed or they are not exposed but if it is greater than one then exposed are having more chances and if odds are less than one then exposed are having less chances so that is the interpretation of odds ratio and in cohort studies we generally compute relative risk here is a disease status risk factor present risk factor absent then how many with the present when there is when the disease was present a absent c and here absent in b and b d so here incidence of disease incidence of disease is only when they are present out of the total total is a upon b a over b a plus b and here it is c d sorry yeah absent means incident of disease that means c upon d plus d c plus d i think yeah okay then if you take the ratio of these two that will give you relative risk relative risk is a over a plus b divided by c over c plus b so that will give you the relative risk relative risk is generally computed in prospective type of study or cohort type of studies odds ratio is computed in case control study or that is also called a retrospective study right and interpretation is almost same now there is a very important concept of sensitivity and specificity this i am additionally covering but very useful technique now let's say let's take the example of covid 19 when he had the initial stage, when COVID-19 appeared in 2020, March, April, there was no testing procedure. Hopefully you will agree with me. There was no testing procedure, proper test, no machines were there. People were not aware of whether they are having COVID, they are having cough and cold, or they are actually having COVID. Later on, many methods have emerged to test the COVID-19 procedure. But initial two, three, more, four, two, three, four months, there was no proper procedure. Hopefully, you will agree with me. Yes or no? Hello? Yes. So, in that case, let's say this is called predicted positive and the actual positive. What does this mean? This means when the person was having COVID-19, the actual positive, and the test also predicted that they are positive, then this is called true positive. This is called true positive. TP stands for true positive. Please try to understand. When the person is actually having COVID-19 
and he was detected after conducting the test that yes he is actually having covid 19 that is called true positive what is true negative true negative is the person was not having covid 19 and test also says predicted that it is negative test also says that they don't have that means it's a true negative so diagonals are two positive and two negative but what about this situation the person was actually negative but it was predicted positive by the test that means it is false positive you agree with me yes please yes sir. and let me tell you i was involved with the covid 19 research at the initial three four months if i tell you the rate of false positive then you will be surprised to know that 60 to 70 percent of the cases were false positive person were not having disease but they were test were saying that they were having and they were put into the hospital with other patients many times it happens and they developed covid 19 because that was the result of false positive right so false positive is a very dangerous state similarly false negative the person was having covid 19 but the test says it doesn't have so that is called false negative okay so here you have true positive true negative here you have false positive false negative and if you add these two tp plus fn you will get actual positive because here is actual positive actual positive here you have actual negative so total of this will be actual negative here you have predicted positive predictive positive pp and here you have total total will be tp plus fp will be pp and what is pn pn is predicted negative fn plus tn will be this and overall either you add this or you add you will get n that is a total number is the table clear yes please hello is this yes. table clear yes sir so this tp stands for true positive tn stands for true negative fp false positive fn false negative pp predictive positive pn predicted negative this is actual positive an actual negative now based on this we compute basically one of the important correlation and that correlation is called matthews correlation coefficient that correlation is called matthews correlation coefficient now how to compute this first of all we look at some terminology and they are known as sensitivity and specificity very important and through sensitivity and specificity draw we can draw roc curve and roc curve will give you the diagnostic accuracy of your test how important your test is for example if you are conducting certain test so if i look at the roc curve i'll come to know the accuracy about your test okay what is sensitivity sensitivity is simple to compute true positive divided by actual positive so if you go through true positive divided by actual positive that means tp divided by ap is your sensitivity okay what is specificity specificity is tn divided by an true negative divided by actual negative is your specificity right you just look at the diagonal elements divided by the total so tp divided by ap is your specificity tn divided by an is your sensitivity so i am computing here specificity sensitivity sensitivity and specificity then what is positive predicted value and negative predicted value your positive predicted value is nothing but tp divided by pp on this side and the negative predicted value tn divided by pn you can see tp divided by pp tn divided by pn known as positive predicted value and negative predicted value okay now is this terminology clear sensitivity and specificity hello hello is this terminology yes, about sir. yes sir now why we are doing this i will tell you why and so important in clinical research particularly why this is important right sensitivity and specificity once you compute sensitivity and specificity you can see is there any association or a correlation 
between the test and the actual value so that can be that is given by matthews correlation coefficient now once this tp tn fp fn you you compute all these term, terms and you will get matthews correlation and value will lie between minus 1 to plus 1 and interpretation is same as what you have learned but the important point here is to draw roc curve now how the roc curve is being drawn i'll take up one example and then i'll give you idea about the roc curve roc curve is basically called receiver operating characteristic curve which is an excellent way to compare diagnostic test now i'll consider this data and we can actually compute roc curve of course we will not have to compute spss will do it for you and today we'll do it practically also but just to give you some idea how this roc curve works now consider the data for serum ferritin serum ferritin is ferritin level present in the blood serum is called blood as a test for iron deficiency it will test whether there is iron deficiency that is called anemia or not right so if the serum ferritin level in the blood is less than 15 then how many people are having iron deficiency and how many are not having iron deficiency so 470 people four people are having iron deficiency only 20 are not having similarly if serum ferritin is between 15 to 34 175 are having iron deficiency 70 are not 79 are not having between 35 to 64 82 and 171 65 to 94 30 and 168 and when it becomes more than 94 then iron deficiency only less but no iron deficiency value increases to 1339 so this is our table and now how to draw the roc curve for this data so in roc curve we generally take cutoffs how to take cutoff for example if i take cutoff as 34 if i take cutoff as 34 for serum ferritin so i can combine because sensitivity and specificity i can compute only for two by two table two by two table two rows and two columns that's it sensitivity and specificity is always for two by two table so i need to reduce this to two by two table how we can do that let's say i take cutoff as 34 less than or equal to 34 and greater than 34 so if it is less than or equal to 34 i will combine these two because they are similarly i'll combine these two and greater than 34 i'll combine these three values 82 30 and 8 48 and 171 168 and this if you do this you will get this table less than or equal to 34 for example 474 plus 175 answer is 649 similarly 79 plus 20 answer is 99 similarly if you combine 82 plus 30 plus 48 you will get 160 and similarly this plus this you will get value as 1671 is this is this clear if i take 34 as cutoff yes please hello hello yes, sir. so this is clear now now it is reducing to two by two table now it's the reduction to two by two table i can compute sensitivity and specificity how to compute sensitivity 649 divided by 809 multiply by 100 you will get sensitivity how to compute specificity 1671 divided by 1770 multiply by 100 you will get specificity so sensitivity is 80.2 specificity is 94.4 but at which cutoff cutoff where we take 34 is that okay yes please when we take 30, 34 as cutoff, you will get one value of sensitivity, one value of specificity. Is that okay? Yes. Hello. Sir. Similarly, let's look at the same table again. Suppose I take 15 as a cutoff, then there will be one in this row, 474 and 20, and rest of them greater than 15 will be combined. And again, you can compute sensitivity and specificity at point 15. Similarly, if I take 64 as cutoff, then you can combine these three and combine these two. You will get again sensitivity and specificity cutoff will be 64. Similarly, for 94, you can get similarly for this value. So once you do the calculations, 
you will get this table for example less than less than 15 this was sensitivity this was specificity for 34 we have computed for 34 80.2 and 94.4 you can check 80.2 and 94.4 similarly you can get sensitivity and specificity at 0.64 these will be the value this is sensitivity this is specificity and 94 94.1 and 75.3 then once the sensitivity and specificity they are known to you let's do one more calculation i subtract 100 minus specificity 100 minus specificity so 100 minus 98.9 1.1 100 minus 94.4 5.6 100 minus 84.7 15.6 100 minus 75.6 right so basically, we plot the ROC curve. How do we plot the ROC curve? Sensitivity, sensitivity along y-axis and 100 minus specificity. This 100 minus specificity along x-axis. So I will take this value along y-axis. I will take this value along x-axis. And you will get ROC curve. So you can see 1 minus specificity or 100 minus if you're writing in terms of percentage you can write this as 100 100 minus specificity and sensitivity and you will get this type of curve and then we compute the area under this curve so we drop a line from here we drop a line from here a diagonal line and then we look for the area and that is called AUROC area under the ROC curve and if I compute for this Previous experiment, it is coming out to be 0.92. SPSS will give you. Just wait. So if your area under the curve is 1, that means your test is perfect. It is giving 100% true result. But if it is between 0.90 to 0.99, then still it is considered to be an excellent test. Area under the curve. Area under the curve will always lie between 0 and 1. It's a probability. Then if your area under the curve is 0.80 to 0.89, then it is a good test. If it is between 0.7 to 0.79, fair test. But if it is between 0.51 to 0.69, very poor test. And if it is 0.5 or below, 0.5 or below, it is a useless test. There, there is no idea of going for such type of test, worthless test. That is the idea of plotting this ROC curve. It will give you the diagnostic accuracy of your test, which is generally used for comparison purpose. So let's say there are two types of tests available for COVID-19. I want to test which one is more efficient. So you compare the area under the curve for both the tests. You compute sensitivity and specificity for each and every at different time points and then plot and get the area which is having the better area will be preferred test as compared to the other one yes please is that okay hello hello yes sir it's okay but okay. sir i have a doubt yes please uh, sir, you were uh, explaining that uh, about the serum, peritin, and uh, IDB. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so in this case, the serum per uh, peritin, we, uh, we are considering serum peritin as an independent variable or it is something else? Nothing to do with independent or dependent variable. It is okay. just a levels of different intervals. That's it. There is no dependent and independent variable for ROC curve. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. There is no independent. It's not a regression technique, right? Yes, okay. please. Any other question? Now I'll practically do it. I'll practically do it. How to perform ROC curve? How to get its value, right? Yes, please. Any other question in ROC curve? These are the things which are not given in many of the books. That's why, because they are associated with logistic regression, so I prefer that I should cover all this, right? So now we'll do it. Have you seen this picture earlier? Hello? No, sir. Nahi dekha aapne. Can you see my photograph somewhere? <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, sir. See, I am here. 
actually before coming to the practical example let me tell you a little bit of story in 2000 this is picture of 3rd october 2019 and this is a picture of 3 months before number 4 to 6 just 4 months before now it is february so in november i was again in greece this was the picture from greece and this is just a motivation for you let me tell you something very important in 2017 two years because this international medical olympiad is this conference is held after every two years so it was held started from 2003 2003 2005 i was not aware of i came to know about this i came to know about this in 2017 I applied for this conference actually. This was a conference of nuclear medicine. And the I submitted my abstract and my abstract got rejected. And who was the person who rejected this? He is the person 84 years of age. Name is Professor Grammaticos. He is the person. He is a retired professor emeritus at the Aristotle University in Greece place is called Thessaloniki okay he rejected then I have written to him a very polite email that sir why my abstract has been rejected is there anything uh, which is not clear I can explain so he has written back to me that Dr. Sharma your abstract is related to statistics why our conference is on nuclear medicine so that's why it has been rejected nothing wrong with the abstract so i came to know that where is the problem so i asked him i was doing that time the some some research on thyroid cancer so i asked him should i send you the another abstract on thyroid cancer he says yes i send him on the thyroid cancer where i compare the two different techniques that thyroid cancer is difficult to detect at the initial stage using bioinformatics approach as well as statistical approach and um, he he accepted my abstract i went there in 2017 and uh, there were many people people from 26 different countries participating in that conference three days conference and once people were making presentations most of them they were doctors and they were making presentations about uh, somebody was asked me today normality how to check normality t test anova or a ROC curve, they have applied different techniques and people have made many, many mistakes. And I was sitting on the chair whenever the, there was end of the presentation, 20 minutes were given. Whenever there is a statistical, when I ask questions, have you checked the normality? People were not aware of. There, they have to apply Mon Whitney test, they have applied T test. So many of the presentations there were problem and i was pointing out to each and everyone giving suggestion that you should have done this you should have done this you should have done this constructive suggestions for three days continuously and the time has come when these persons when the presentation was over and they were expecting that there will be a question from dr sharma <laughs> so i thought whatever it is if they are making mistakes i should rectify and after when the three days conference is over we were ready to come out I was sitting in a waiting hall and uh, there was actually the, there was there is a meeting of international olympiad committee and from each country there is only one participant in India there was one participant already who was the participant he is professor Bandopadhyay from Ames Delhi all India Institute of medical science Delhi the professor of nuclear medicine so one person from India was already there so they generally do not induct the second one but when this meeting was going on inside they were deciding about the next conference and all the other activities of the international medical olympiad one person came to me and he says dr sharma you have been invited inside where the meeting was going on i went inside and this professor grammaticos was and two other people who were controlling that entire meeting one chair was there they have asked me to sit on that chair i sit i said i have done some crime or they maybe they they want to scold me what happens i don't know i was sitting there 
and this person has announced that dr sharma for the last 3 days you have given very constructive suggestion to the to the doctors and i think doctors have made a big mistakes in their presentations and if you don't if you agree we want to induct you as an as an advisor of international medical olympiad so we want to appoint you as an advisor of international medical olympiad now you think of that i was thinking something else and here is something else so that day i was appointed as the advisor to the international medical olympiad and i came back to india this person has written to me that you know so so much of statistics you can write a book for medical statistics people then i have written that book and he says that i will invite you in next conference in 2019 and i will launch your book the entire i will pay you the charges to and fro i'll you will stay in five star hotel and i will launch your book that's why that book was launched here you follow my point so there is a rejection in value <laughs> rejection as a value if i would have said okay they have rejected fine but i just asked them why it has been rejected and that is the result of that this book has come out otherwise i would not have written this book and then in 2000 again just two three that there was in covid after that there was no conference in 2021 then 2021 there was a conference they again invited me here i am and uh, i made presentation over there on covid 19 predictive modeling and what happens this is a place called thessaloniki greece this is the place where conference was held this is a birth place of alexander the great and thessaloniki is a sister of alexander the great on on the name of alexander sister this name of the city is thessaloniki and aristotle university is the teacher of he was the teacher of alexander the great there was a aristotle university at this place and what happens i'll get the first i mean the prize on the predictive modeling corona virus pandemic paper my paper was just the best one out of all the 65 presentations they were made so on one side i got a rejection on other side i am getting the recognition so don't be afraid of rejections in life that is my message to you hello <laughs> did you follow something Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we'll go for a practical demo. We'll go for a practical demo of logistic regression. It won't take more than ten minutes now. So let me open logistic regression, some data, and show it to you. Okay. all right so here is the data i'll explain you the data then you will be able to understand they in i there is a problem that is called glaucoma glaucoma aapko hindi mein bolte kala motiya ek hota safed motiya cataract aur ek hota glaucoma whenever there is a glaucoma there is a distorted vision at the central part of the eye near retina so people get glaucoma problem with age and sometimes in younger age also so this is the age first variable is age then there is a gender variable person is a male or a female so there are few females and males also then this glaucoma also depends upon history just like diabetes depends upon history of the father mother or ancestors same way glaucoma also depends upon history history if there is any history of glaucoma in their family then it is yes if there is no then it is no right and then glaucoma is being treated through through two types of surgery surgery a and b they are complicated names so i have written just a and b so this is how the data is looks like so here there is a age sex categorical variable history of glaucoma if they are having one if they are not having zero type of surgery there are three types of surgery actually one two and three a b and c yeah a b and c three types of surgeries and then post pre glaucoma that means even after the surgery 
the person gets second time glaucoma that is called post glaucoma that is called post glaucoma so if they are developing yes if they are not developing no so basically the post pk glaucoma is your dependent variable in in logistic regression right so this is, has to be dichotomous one or zero so either it is one or it is zero so this is your z and it depends upon x1 h it depends upon continuous variable x2 it, x2 is gender x3 is history of glaucoma x4 type of surgery and this is your dependent so this is dependent variable z depends upon x1 x2 x3 and x4 yes please data is clear hello hello yes sir. yes sir now i want to get idea that if a person if of certain age male or a female and there is a history of glaucoma and type of surgery what are the chances that person is having post pk glaucoma that means again after surgery there are chances that glaucoma will appear that is the question now there are categorical variable there are continuous variable so all multiple regression techniques fail so only technique will be logistic regression and it's binary logistic because your dependent variable is dichotomous yes please is this okay should i go ahead with the analysis now yes sir sure. so data is clear to you and we will draw the roc curve also so go to analysis go to regression and in regression there is called a term binary logistic so go to this this regression binary logistic and you are dependent variable can you tell me which one is dependent variable now yes please which the one is post pk, post -PK glaucoma uh, yes yeah, okay the last one post pk glaucoma is dependent and what are the independent variables rest which is listed in the control a and take all of them to this side is that okay yes sir right now it says enter method enter method will take all the variables whether they are significant or not doesn't matter so let's go for options in options we need to look at hosmer lesmer goodness of fit test whether this data is fit to apply fit to apply logistic regression or not and this wherever it is written exponential b this is basically odds ratio which i explained you so this is odds ratio so it will give you odds ratio along with the 95 percent confidence intervals for odds ratio so continue from here and then you can save that probabilities for example you can save the predicted probabilities let me just stretch a little bit so that you can see you can save the predicted probabilities also the group membership that's all from here and uh, that's all all right so this is your logistic regression i have saved the probabilities also because through the probabilities we will draw the roc curve so now press ok so if you press ok analysis has been done i'll explain you there were 100 and 212 y's no missing value so your initial value no is zero yes is one that's okay there is no need to see this table there is no need to see this table then you come to block number one block number one okay just wait for a moment right okay now you see the test is here that is called whether your data is fit to apply the logistic regression or not i click the test where is the method ominous test model summary yeah this is the test hosmer and let me show test it will it will just give you the idea whether you can apply logistic regression to this model or not so this value that means data fits well to apply logistic regression alternative it is not fit to apply so if this is coming out to be non-significant it is non-significant that means your data is fit to apply logistic regression then if you remember 
in multiple regression there were r square and adjusted r square there were r square and adjusted r square if you remember you have done multiple regression yes please yes sir so here there will be no r square adjusted r square second terminology is used that is called cox and snell r square and neger kate r square this is equivalent of your r square in of multiple regression which is 0.251 and this is equivalent of adjusted r square so these values are 0.251 and 0.381 right then which variables to be included into the equation it says that this is actually the predicted value this is the actual value so table is between predicted and actual value just like actual positive true positive and false positive so these are true positive true positive false positive false negative these are and based on that sensitivity and specificity so overall accuracy of the model is 84.9 overall as accuracy of the model is 84.9 that means based on this model based on this model if you want to predict let's say age is given history is given gender is given type of surgery is given so in 85% of the cases your prediction will be okay this is what it means so overall percentage is about 85% and this is all odds ratio so odds ratio for female versus male is 0.127 history of glaucoma this now if you see which coefficient is coming out to be non significant type of surgery type of surgery is coming out to be this one 0.738 that means type of surgery doesn't matter which type of surgery abc you choose it doesn't matter so you can rerun your analysis and get the result basically okay so that you can i mean just delete this type of surgery and you will get better results so let me do that i'll just close this output and also close this these which have i saved and do it further analysis regression binary logistic and change this method to forward lr forward lr means it will retain only those variable into the model which are making a significant contribution so press okay and same result will be there it's the same thing only change will be here that in the final equation again model authenticity is this now that type of surgery has been removed type of surgery is not there because we have applied stepwise regression that was a stepwise regression actually so age is significant sex is significant history of glaucoma is highly significant and the cost from here you can form your z equation and these are all odds ratio and uh, variables which have been thrown out of the model is type of surgery because it was non significant right model authenticity is 84.95% let's draw the roc curve also because i saved the probabilities now how this probability is computed now you know the value of z because there is a equation your equation will be like this let me write down the equation for you i will write down the equation from here so history of let's say let's say z is equal to now constant constant is your 4.980 then plus plus then the age coefficient that is beta 1 it has been estimated 0.024 multiply with h plus the second coefficient is minus so it will go as a minus minus 2.067 multiply with sex minus minus uh, 5.428 multiply with history of glaucoma history of glaucoma so this is history of glaucoma okay so this is your equation of that now you give any value to age sex value is 1 or 2 history of glaucoma is 0 or 1 you can predict you can predict your z and when z is substituted in that equation 1 over 1 plus e raised to power minus z then you will get this probability this is the probability 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल पर्सन हुज एज इज थर्टी एट सेक्स इज वन दैट मीन्स इट्स अ मेल हिस्ट्री ऑफ ग्लूकोमा इज यस type of surgery we have not considered because it has been thrown out of the model then there are 16% chances of developing a coronary heart disease and no chances virtually so this is how the prediction is and based on this prediction we can draw the roc curve how to draw the roc curve roc is curve is not under graphics where is the roc curve roc curve is if you go to analysis and in analysis there is this roc curve so look at this roc curve and your test variable is this probability so this is a predicted probability this predicted probability is your test variable state variable is state variable is either 1 or 0 because that is your glucoma glucoma level if person is having yes then it is 1 no is 0 so your state variable is basically you can write from here post pk glucoma so state variable is post pk glucoma so your your state value is 1 1 means yes and then diagonal standard error coordinates so you can compute this and in options you will not have to do anything now your roc curve will be ready and you can see the roc curve so here is the roc curve this is the roc curve 1 minus sensitivity this is sensitivity specificity and from where it has pick up the values we had different cut offs if you look at cut off these are cut off as this cut off as this cut off as this so it has computed sensitivity and 1 minus this and then plotted this value all these cut offs right and then finally it has computed the area under the roc curve au roc curve so area under the curve is 0.805 that means almost 81% with close confidence interval right so that means your diagnostic accuracy of the test is about 81% it's a very good test so you will come out that almost 85% of the cases will be correctly classified in the sample and they will be 81% correctly classified in the population because area under the roc curve give you interpretation about population and this will give you idea about this classification about the sample and this is about the population that if you take second third fourth sample then at least 81% of the cases will be correctly specified by your model so anything above 70% is considered to be good so this is what do you mean by binary logistic regression any question please yes please and slightly a difficult technique but very important technique yes please any question now i am open to questions hello yes please any question meri awaaz pahunch rahi hai aap tak hello yes sir koi As question of now so no questions okay because or koi the thing that you have explained is uh, i think i understood till now okay so i think these were all the topics which we need to cover and i covered i think uh, no other topic is there so